What's good, guys? Welcome back to the end of the week review. All right. It was a pretty eventful week this week, and we had to uh, kind of end off the week a little bit slow just because there was not too many news, but we were able to see what the markets provided for us um, Thursday, Friday. And of course, today I'm joined again by Leo. What's up, Leo? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, my opinion this week was pretty hectic. I think um, for me, this week was a little drawn out. I did ex experience a lot of movement in the market. So that's probably why. Um, ultimately, I'm, I'm glad it's over. It was a good week overall, and I learned a lot through my trading. Yeah, let's let's dive in and just recap everything that we saw um, through our lens and let's get started. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's get started with dollar index. All right, go for it, Leo. All right, so this is dollar on the daily chart. Um, so this week was pretty crazy for the dollar, despite a not too crazy news event week with the exception of cpi we did see that big expansion um, down here this big one as well as another smaller one at the end of the week we were in a consolidation for most of the week with uh, past the cpi expansion and it made it a little tricky to work around price after uh, the dollar jumped so much overall though it was a pretty volatile week, so I think we had enough to work with. So in the beginning of the week, we started off the week at 105, 800 around that level. And then at the end of the week, we ended at 103, 800-ish, working into this buy side imbalance sell side and efficiency range. We saw a bounce up of that early in the week. Now, as we end off the week, we're trading deeper into it, almost filling it. So that's very interesting to see. And I'm looking forward to what price shows us next week. Now on the dollar hourly, as you can see, we have all the day markers noted here, Monday through Friday, and as well as all the news release um, events noted. So as you can see on Tuesday, we have that big CPI news release causing dollar to expand way lower into this balance side imbalance sell side and efficiency daily. We see a bounce of that. I did note this, this imbalance here in hindsight to show you guys how we did run up off of this expansion into this imbalance. And as you can see, price is re respecting this imbalance very neatly, which tells me that price is very heavy at the moment. And as we trade into it at the end of the week, I see that order flow showing me that um, it wants to go lower at the moment. Past Tuesday into Friday, we are stuck in pretty much a big range here. And using the dollar to relate to other asset classes, it was a little tricky to navigate. As after this big expansion, we were thrown into a consolidation phase. Did you have anything to add, Alan? Uh, not really. You know, I did. We did mention on the mid on the midweek review right that there was also liquidity still resting down below and buy side above we want to see dixie become bullish but as we saw thursday friday it started trading towards down that sell side liquidity where friday ultimately sweeps its uh tuesday low but um but yeah let's move on from dollar index All right we have eu 15 minutes right and eu 15 minute was something i wanted to share with you guys on friday right particularly this was a very very clean setup that i did not personally take Right, I just noted this out after. I kind of avoided Forex a little bit just because, like I said, um, on the middle review, that I expected EU to do a little bit more catch up while GU was consolidating and not do too much. Right, where well, we saw that happen in EU. Right, Friday drops lower. That's a nice Judas. Price runs up. Right, trades up here, pushes higher, drops lower. Right, I noted the buy side there, and then that was the fifteen minute promotion block there. If you go on your chart, that open price to that low is the exact tick it's perfect right so that was a nice response from it press started building orders here right trades back down into uh in five minute order block that i'll show you guys when i go down lower right price runs higher pushes higher last stop run right at 9 30 rice run starts running really really aggressively right punches higher into buy side liquidity resting here and it fails to sweep out those lows 
Um, and just by rule of thumb, you should always be out of the market by 11 a.m. in trading Forex. You don't want to be caught in basically the reversal of the end, the basically close of the day. Let's move to the lower time frame. The five minute, I know just kept this here, 15 minute uh, bullish proportion block, right? Price drops lower, sweeps the low here. Price runs aggressively, trades back down into this order block, right? Price runs higher here. Usually, if I was in this trade, me personally, I would take partials or close my trade here. This is more than enough for me to get out. I was just run hypothetical where you can hold until the close, which is up here, right? You would have to sit through all this and another stop run down here. And then after sitting all through this, you would have to, or you would be able to catch this big move higher to end, to end off the day on Friday, right? Price trading up into buy side liquidity, takes out the bodies as you saw in the uh, the slide before, right? Fails to take out the wick up here, but you should be out of the market by 11 a.m., right? So this would be your hypothetical close if you held it through this, through all of this, right? Um, like I said, if this was a trade that I was personally in, I would probably be out here, right? And not really hold more since it is Friday. So let's move on to GU. So GU one hour. Uh, on Wednesday, like I said, price moved lower. I guess I didn't expect you to do too much, right? Since, like I said, EU need to play catch up. However, you guys noted out already, EU ran a very aggressively higher while GU failed to do that, right? Kind of kept them in this range here, remained heavy. It's chilling in the level of premium at the moment for Friday. I want to see what they want to do when market opens, right? EU could run a little bit higher, allowing GU to trade higher as well into deeper premium before shorting or selling off. That would allow Dixie to kind of punch a little bit lower, run down into and fill that uh, imbalance in and then maybe potentially have a nice retracement or even a reversal. I am not calling out a low on Dixie or a high on EUGU, just a hypothetical scenario that could or could not play out. I know that I saw the liquidity down here, right? Price kind of shallowly ran through that. Nice move away from it, trading in still in this level of premium. I kind of want to see what they do to these buy side resting above here. They just took this buy side out. I want to see if they want to just you know, open, run higher, trade up into this inefficiency here and then roll over or trade higher, use this inefficiency as a way to get above buy side liquidity here. All right, let's move down into a lower time frame. So 15 minute GU, right? No trades on GU for me personally this week. Same thing here, labeled this out from the hour, right? We we're, were noting out how price moved from this. Thursday, price open, drops lower, runs sell side here. We see a nice expansion move higher. Retraces in New York. This could be your New York buy if you really wanted to. Price runs higher aggressively, trades through buy side here, the buy side here. This would be your theoretical exit, or like I said, you can exit before 11 a.m. if you wanted to want to play it safe. And then you would just avoid everything that happened throughout after which after the exit. Friday, similar price opens, drops lower very aggressively, runs through sell uh sell stops here. Nice run higher. Uh if you see EU. You pushed a very, very aggressively higher, taking out their own highs and even these highs up here. For GU, a little bit more controlled. They kind of held price here. They didn't really allow it to run. It looks like it's on a leash. So I kind of want to see what happens uh, when they open price on Sunday, Monday. And I think that should wrap up for EU, GU, basically Forex. Did you have anything you want to add, Leo? Not in particular. I think your coverage is pretty extensive. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's move on from Forex to crude oil. Go, go ahead, Leo. All right, so crude oil on the daily. We had some pretty good movement this week. Price action was very fluid and readable. Uh, as you can see right in here, this week's movement was particularly pretty much a market maker sell model into this imbalance here. However, um, I'd like to note that throughout the whole time of this movement down, I did note that order flow was bearish. I did mention in um the outlook i think that i wanted to see price run into the 50 of this imbalance here which it did on um, the wick went past it the bodies stayed below which was pretty good in my opinion for keeping this bearish narrative intact um i did mention that on the midweek review that when this candle is printed here this in, which is imbalance Price was working in between Cine 788 and Cine 680. That I wanted to see price uh, work into that before um, sliding right past this uh, buy side imbalance, sell side efficiency here. It price doesn't do that. In fact, it just expands off the rip 
right down into a volume imbalance level on the daily chart here, filling that in before reversing within inside to this range, kind of like a turtle soup scenario here. So I'll go into a little bit more detail in the hourly chart, which is coming up. Um, but I did want to note that on a daily basis, uh, if you take the whole range of crude oil, we are in a pretty deep discount here. So this reaction higher is sort of signaling to me as a beginning of this might be a buy program. However, I would need more evidence to come from that idea. But this is just kind of hinting at, oh, why is there this really sensitive uh, level here that price is dipping down and moving away from? So I'll be um, sussing that out and watching price to see how we move from here, whether uh, this imbalance is respected and used to move higher, or do we consolidate here? We'll see in the outlook for next week. So moving on to the lower time frame, crude oil and the hourly, as you can see, pretty good price action for the whole week, basically a sell program. Moving from Monday, we do see an expansion higher inside this imbalance I noted here. We see this kind of manipulation move here, uh, pushing through it into kind of the 75% 70, quadrant of this whole range here. I like to note that this kind of consolidation here is where that body is formed and where most of the orders are resting here. And this is the manipulation move into a deeper premium. Now, um, after this movement here, this, on, on Wednesday, this run lower kind of signaled to me, okay, we're still selling off. We're still bearish. The order flow is still seeking liquidity on the downside. So I, I wasn't super uh, flipping my bias and, and, and turning bearish yet, uh, as you can see in the mid-week review. So this imbalance I noted out here, 7788 and 7680, I wanted to see price trade into it. However, we don't. And this imbalance here was signaling, okay, we're running into a discount really quick. And then I wanted to see what they were doing down here. And eventually we do fill this gap in here and making for a complete sell program and possibly a reverse sell profile. So I do like this bounce here at the 75, 78 which is the top of the daily buy side and balance sell side efficiency level. And I'll be looking for how we open for more pointers on where price would go. But overall, pretty good week for crude oil. Yeah, and that should be all. All right, moving on to E-mini S&P 500 futures on the daily chart. We had a pretty big range this week, moving from this imbalance high here for 36425 to the monthly bearish order block for 53450, approximating it. So this is a pretty big weekly range, which is nice. We shot past the sell side imbalance by side efficiency, which we were looking at for the past week, as well as these relative equal highs. Uh, for 51450, basically right here, these these little patch of highs here into a daily uh, bearish order block, which I wanted to bring your attention to as we were, um, the bodies of this were meeting the mean threshold of it pretty nicely, as well as we see on the lower time frame the bodies are respecting the monthly bearish order block as well. So moving on to the lower time frame here, which we can break down, price down with a little bit more detail. So in the beginning of the week, um, piggybacking off last week's analysis, uh, we did mention a trade into here and a reaction off that, which is nice. In the Outlook video, I did mention this uh, buy set of balance sell side efficiency here, as well as the volume imbalance on the daily chart, which I've been talking about for a while. I wanted to see price trade into it. However, we don't. We use this to move higher, which is nice for bullish order flow because price is not pretty light. It's not messing around in these discount PD rays and instead it's moving very quickly away from them, which is nice. 
So we see that uh, liquidity is taken on the buy side, liquidity is taken oh, wait, on the sell side first, and then buy side. And then we consolidate, creating another sell side liquidity pool, which price takes out. Sorry, the, uh, the little line is covering the wick there. But yeah, it does get taken out. And then we move higher on CPI into these highs here. And then we trail higher into the monthly, monthly bearish order block. Uh, with the bodies here respecting it very nicely, which I really like. I hope we can get a reaction off of that. I'm assuming a lot of positions are being exchanged around here, which is why there's a lot of consolidation around here. Because it is a monthly level and order flow is probably exchanging hands with a lot of market to participants. So uh, overall, it was a pretty tight range post-CPI. And it could have been probably very difficult to trade around. So um, this is very risk off to me. I wouldn't be really pushing it, especially with the big expansion early in the week. I'm expecting consolidation throughout, which happened. Um, and these news events here didn't even really trigger too much movement. So um, a couple of things I'm looking at is the sell side here, sell side here, as well as the imbalance here. Um, however, there's the, uh, the Anything can happen. We could keep even pushing higher depending on what, what happens, but um, it's nice to see a consolidation at this monthly PD array. Did you have anything to add for uh, S&P, Alan? No, no. I think what you covered was really, really uh, on the dot of kind of what I wanted to say about S&P as well, right? A lot of bullish movement in S&P and NAS. Um, as of right now, S&P does look like it could do one more stop run higher. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Or they can just come down and rate those outside liquidity first and then run their own highs, you know, just to really, really get both sides of markets out and uh, load up with their real move, as ICT would call it. Um, but yeah, let's move on from S&P. And I'll go over some of my NASDAQ trades that I mentioned on Wednesday. All right, this is my Wednesday trade uh, for NAS. We saw price run higher here. Price traded up into this inefficiency here. That was my entry. My stop was above this. I'm assuming this is a stop run. They should not run through this high. Price trade down into this low hanging fruit here. That's where my first target was. So I decided to close the whole thing. Price retraced very aggressively. And I was like, okay, do they want to run for these highs here? If they do, that can be a second, like a second stop run there. Then I would really favor them to start running down for these sell side down here. As soon as price starts giving uh, a little bit more choppiness. I wasn't really interested in selling until I saw this little candle kind of wick up higher and then drop aggressively. I saw this nice inefficiency there. Price trades up into it. I was able to catch my sell right there. Price then trades into this uh, uh, bullish candle here and then uh, sells off really aggressively, which I was very, very happy with. And then this one last push higher here. As soon as it dropped, I was like, okay, should not run back this high here. If it takes out this high here, then I need to basically kill my trade. And as you guys can see, price trade down here, open runs up higher, runs really aggressively into that low right there. I was just be like, okay, I'll just call this here, close this trade here. Um, just because there was a big, uh, big bullish move that just happened. I wasn't trying to overstay my welcome. They don't really have to run for these lows they did, if they didn't want to. But as you guys can see here, they ran uh, really, really nicely into those lows there. Price then reacted from it very, very nicely. But I was able to catch the line portion of the move and I was more than happy with that. Moving on to the next trade. This is the five minute NASDAQ trade. So price trades up here, drops lower. And in my opinion, I was more focused on this, these three uh, consecutive candles here. This was just them trading inside this order block. This is everything here was just them trading inside this order block. So when price traded lower, took out that uh, swing low right there, I was like, okay, this is the change state delivery. Price trades up into uh, this these uh, up candles here. I was able to catch my short there. Price trades very, very aggressively lower into the sell side here. And I was thinking about taking my partials after this run lower here. But then um, I, I noted these lows out. So I kind of stayed for another like five minutes where it kind of just came down. I just closed it as soon as it touched it. Just killed it there. And then I noted these lows here. I saw this big reaction higher, which to me looked like it was a very like sus move that it traded right into the bear shoulder block. So when it closed, right, price kind of opened higher, 
I kind of got in my trade there. So price immediately reacted from it. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me put my stop above this candle here, above this down candle here. And then price starts trading higher. This is the breaker, in my opinion, right? What And the bearish order block there. Price drops lower very, very aggressively, which is what I like to see. And as soon as it takes out its own low here, I said, okay, this is more than enough for me. Let me just get out there. So price opens, drops lower. I, I basically collapse the trade. Price then reacts from it, trades back into this uh, up candle down here, drops lower again, trading down into the final sell side liquidity. But I didn't really want to overstay my welcome. Like I said, I already caught this portion and I just kind of was wanting to try to get one more tad bit extra. No, no particular reason. I was like, okay, this looks really, really good. I'm just take a, a small trade here, caught this move lower. And I was like, okay, call this day. This is on Thursday. So you saw Wednesday trade, Thursday trade. And then my next trade, obviously, is going to be a Friday trade. So for Friday, this was more of a riskier trade, I would say. So before, before I went to sleep, price ran higher here. I was able to short this move because I was like, okay, this has been the opening price. Price kind of consolidated on here. Small little equal lows, relatively equal lows down here that caught my attention. And as soon as price started moving away from it, very aggressively, this is the first, first drive higher by running some buy side out. And I was personally already favoring sell side liquidity. And I didn't think this was going to be a deep enough draw or deep enough run lower. When I, I was expecting them to run down to this low here, but they didn't. So as soon as price kind of started running higher, I was looking for a potential uh, run higher. This move down here wasn't explosive enough for me. So I didn't want to sell any of this like retracement into it. As soon as it dropped lower, it came up, closed like this. I was like, ah. I don't know if this really wants to drop lower, right? But you compare what happened after this was when five, when finally price drops up one more time running its own highs. I was comfortable shorting this. So as soon as I was shorting this, I was like, okay, I want to see immediate reaction from it. Price drops very nicely. Two candles. This is the five minutes. So 10 candles. I was like, okay, that's more enough for me to kill this trade here. Go to sleep. Wake up tomorrow morning for AM trade. And then as, as I was like preparing to sleep, I was like, okay, I'm going to set a sell limit up here just because I wanted to see a price want to get up there as a stop run and then tank. took Put a sell limit there. I slept through all of this. Woke up basically here. This candle here, this is 6, I mean, 9.30 Eastern time, 6.30 my time. So 6.30, I wake up and I see that my trade has been has been tagged and I was in profit. So I was like, oh, it's right down to Southside South Equity. I saw that we ran out the, the London lows, right? And I didn't take any partials yet. So I immediately closed partials as soon as, as basically my alarm was 6.30, 6.30 came up. I closed my alarm, closed the trade, turn off my alarm, closed the trade, right? And I had a small portion left that I was able to like, just let it run. Cause I really want to see them run through these lows down or this low here, right? Price trades lower, right? Takes out south side here. And I was like, okay, this is good enough for me on Friday. And I'll be done with Friday. I, was, I texted Leo in the morning, you know, Leo has the message. I was like, yo, I just caught the NAS short. Leo, you know, he was the first person I messaged. I was like, yo, I caught the NAS short. I'm going back to bed. And uh, that was it. But um, but yeah, that should wrap up my week for NAS and my trading. Um, As of right now, I kind of want to wait and see over the weekend, do a little bit more analysis to see where I think NAS might or where the charts might go. Might wait until Sunday open to see if we get some more information before we drop our weekly outlook video. So stay tuned for that. And if you guys have any questions about why I took the trade there, why I closed the trade there, leave them down below and then I'll be more than happy to uh, help you guys out and answer your questions. Same thing for Leo. Any questions for Leo, Absolutely. drop them down below. But um, but yeah, anything you want to add, Leo? Not in particular. I'm glad you uh, turned off your alarm first before exiting the trade. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, my alarm is ringing. Turn off my alarm, close the trade, and I was like, okay, let's see, uh, what else I can do. And I was like, I'm going back to bed, basically, because I I wasn't expecting something like this massive to happen overnight. But I'm glad I'm glad I was able to get tagged in there, and then I uh, ran really aggressively lower. But yeah, yeah, that should wrap up this week. Is there anything else you want to add for them, Leo? Mm -hmm. Only last thing is, I noticed uh, ES was a lot heavier than NQ, but that's, that's about it. Nothing crazy. Yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. But yeah, we hope you guys had a great trading week as well. All right. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the weekly outlook. And we'll see you guys then. Peace. Take care, guys.